All right, here we are. We're going to Sao Tome and Principe. How do you guys feel about Sao Tome? Why do they have two names? So <laughs> there's two I, islands. Is it two places? Yeah. Okay. So okay. two islands, kind of like St. Kitts and Nevis, episode three, if you've seen that one. But yeah, so there's two islands. One's Sao Tome, one's Pr- Principe. Principe. Okay. Um, Let's go with the second one. Yeah. I like that, yeah. Principe. So, do you guys know anything about this? Have you heard of this place? I looked it... up just on Google Maps to see where it was before the filming, but and then it was Portuguese uh, yeah. colony. That's about all I know. No, nothing about it. All right, so we're we're back in Africa. Technically, not in the mainland Africa. So there are some islands off the coast, but we got three of us. So the last couple ones we had a full house. Now we're. Yeah. Scaling back a little bit. Studio is making us scale back a little bit. (laughs) Yeah. I'm Um, glad I made the cut. Thank you. Yeah. And we're ready to go to Sao Tome. And I think it's, I think this place should be called Sao Tome and then kind of like in lowercase font in Principe. But we'll. More like Sao Tome in principle, you know? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) All right. So we said this place is in Africa. We've been to Equatorial Guinea. So it's kind of close to Equatorial Guinea, but it's basically. And thanks to our handy dandy map here, right around here. So in the ocean, but in this vicinity, it's about 200 miles off the coast. So I think the closest country is Gabon or Gabon, as I say, but basically a couple hundred miles off the coast. So not super close to the mainland, but all right. So going into the rundown. So the capital, you guys want to guess? What's the capital of Sao Tome and Principe? Sao Tome. You got it. Damn. Bing, 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 bing. So Killer. Sao Tome is one of the islands. So in this island, this is basically like 90% of the country, 90% of the geography, the, the like physical terrain is all Sao Tome Island. The other 10% of everything else is Principe, Principe. So the size for both of them combined, it's 964 square kilometers. Okay. So this is the second smallest country in Africa behind Seychelles. So the population, it's about 220,000. Okay. Ish. Decent. Decent Mm -hmm. size. And I don't think we've said this yet, but they speak Portuguese. They also speak some other languages. Like, I think this is a common theme with these smaller places. They speak one language at nationally, but then they have a bunch of kind of dialects and so physical. So we said it's two islands off the West coast of Africa. Is it St. Thomas? Is that Tome? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that one's, so you can imagine it's very tropical, very jungly. It's on the equator in between Sao Tome and Principe. It's, it's not easy to get to. So basically you get, you get to Sao Tome. If you want to get to Principe, it's a, Eight to twelve hour ferry ride, or you can take a plane. Damn! But they only have eighteen passenger planes that go in between, so you know you got it. You got to kind of go out of your way to get to the smaller one. How long was the plane ride? Uh, the plane ride is not too far. I don't know, maybe about an hour and a half, two hours. Okay. I think distance wise, it's it'd be like from here to maybe like Waco or something like. Okay. If yeah. if you were, I mean, obviously it's over water, but if you were driving, let's just say it'd be about a couple hour like. Two and a half hour ride and then plane. But yeah, I don't know. With those 18 passenger planes. Not a lot. Know. But they had those going like nonstop to uh, the little islands in Belize. Like they were all small planes. But they're just like constant though. So, yeah. So I don't think they're constant. But there's I, probably not that many tourists. Who, right. Maybe, I don't know. I don't no, know. no. And it's you bring up a good point. It's the second smallest by population and stuff in Africa. But it's also like the one of the least visited places. Which is kind less of strange. Than, um, less than, where's the place in Europe that was the least visited? We went we did a video. Oh, uh, Moldova. Yeah, do more people go to Moldova than Sao Tome? I don't know. I, I think it said there was about 20,000 people who go there for, like, travelers. Leisure. Or leisure yeah. type people. Like, there's people who, who travel there, but probably for business or other things. But for leisure... I think I saw around 20,000 a year, which is pretty tiny. I don't remember what Moldova was, but... I think Moldova was less. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, because it was like like war-torn, right? Part of it was. Oh, yeah. uh, only a small area of the country, but... Yeah. yeah, I don't know. There's something weird about this place. There's something fishy that... 
why is there only why is the tourism so low so it's all part of a like a ridge of extinct volcanoes or inactive volcanoes so they're both basically the tops of old that used to be volcanoes but they're not they don't have it's not like oh this place could blow up like dormant. dominica they're all yeah. dormant they're all archipelagos right yeah is that- so it's it's a chain of islands though that extends i think from like cameroon down and they're in the middle and i think when we had talked about equatorial guinea malibu was the main island where the or the capital but that island is basically in this chain with them the southern part of sao tome so if you go all the way down to the bottom of the island you go to another island you can take a like a 45 minute basically like a guy in a boat to this other island and when you get to that island you can be exactly on the equator oh cool and then they also have a like a man-made like a buoy a man-made island that's further west and that is exactly on the not the equator not just the equator but the prime meridian as well oh wow so you can go if you went to this buoy you'd be in the zero 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 yeah. So that's why they call it Null Island, but it's not Null, null like Null N-U-L. Zero. Yeah, yeah. I don't think you could actually go to Null Island though, unless you had a submarine or a raft or know, <laughs> something. Don't go to Null Island on a raft. <laughs> yeah, you'll probably be stuck out there. So the island of Principe, it's also kind of its own autonomous region. I think it. I think over there that they're just kind of been doing their own thing. I don't know why we have to include it in the name. That's kind of what got me thinking. I'm like, everything about this country, it's like, Principe is there, but why are we why are we saying both? Okay, so this got me thinking. They're a duo, right? So when you say it's Sao Tome and Principe, so it got me thinking of unbalanced duos. What's a what's a duo where, okay, you're a duo, but one of the people doesn't really pull their own weight. The first one that came to mind was. Mario and Luigi. <laughs> what? I feel like Luigi. What? I feel like he's not given his time to shine. Nah, <laughs> okay, but either way, too. he's not taking it either. That's true. He's, he's a chill bit older of a brother. On, yeah. He has a couple. He's a hanger on. I think it's a family business. <laughs> he's the uh, firstborn. If he wasn't the brother, would he still be? I feel there? like everything's Mario. You yeah. know about Mario. Mario has all the titles. You hey, know. Let's talk to the marketing department about this. <laughs> yeah. Okay, it's just. I'm just saying they're a duo, but. Mario's I can't believe you went there first. <laughs> Mario's eighty so. percent of the duo, yes, and then Luigi is just kind of like and Luigi. It's not they're a duo, but everyone knows Mario's the main guy. Right, right. I mean, okay, hey, and I feel like everything that they've done with Luigi, they just take what Mario has and they're like, oh, I guess we'll give a like it's a spin off. Not the haunted yeah, yeah. mansion, you know. Okay, that's Louise the one thing mansion. Luigi has going is a haunted mansion. <laughs> well, you know, they could have given him like instead of Doctor Mario, they could have given him Doctor Luigi. Yeah, you know? Surgeon Luigi. Yeah, maybe yeah, make yeah. it better than yeah, what Mario. Is, Mario yeah. He's always living in Mario's shadow. That is true. Yeah, that's true. There's uh, nothing that even in the games, there's nothing that Luigi. I'm trying to think. I don't know. Maybe like Smash Brothers, but even Mario has multiple characters in Smash Brothers. Maybe you didn't play enough of the RPG, you know. The, I, I didn't. Know, I didn't play the were, Mario RPG, but, but I'm sure it's cool. I'm sure he's still not as good or well rounded. Or I'm sure he's equal. Any, right. <laughs> he's, he's probably not. Do you ever play the Mario Brothers game? Not super, but it was just like the one screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys yeah. came out and it just like stayed on one screen. It was like 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 an old old school arcade. It, game. it looked. Like oh Donkey yeah, Kong. yeah. Yeah, yeah kind of like yeah. Donkey Kong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think it actually came out after. I don't know. I don't know the history. I'm not going to say that. I think, I think in in there was a Mario game where you could go to that. I don't know if it was yeah, Mario Two game. or something yeah. like that, but yeah. it was a mini game. Right, yeah. Right. Yeah. No, I I definitely remember that. But in the, even in those old Nintendo Mario's, I mean, I guess th- then they were both the same. There wasn't any advantage, but yeah. That's any right. other? Yeah. Okay, but that's. They started out like that. They were born from the same code. <laughs> <laughs> they started out like that, and then Mario. Yeah, he's got the star power, all right? <laughs> yeah. I'm not trying to lie. He gets the star. He goes crazy. He gets the princess. Yeah, he gets the yeah. princess. Peach is his. He gets a princess, and then with Luigi, they're like, all right, we'll give you this other kind of princess. Like, they just made up a princess. Well, yeah, they need another female <laughs> character. for the Like, Mario da- is Daisy, Daisy I, I guess? Yeah. The, at least as far as the most unbalanced duo, that was the first one that came to mind because it's like it's not even close. What about like Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen? 
you know, of like something like that. I don't know if that's yeah. dated. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I, I feel like with a basketball team, you have you have other players too. Where it, it'd have to be like a volleyball or oh, like tennis, right, right. something with, where you have to. Right, uh, Simon and Garfunkel, right? Paul Simon was, you know, obviously the talent. Garfunkel just had some harmonies, and uh, you know, I don't think he really ever did much. Like yeah, Simon, wasn't in the Simon room. was like, the could, you know, man. like yeah, but definitely Paul. Simon. But it's funny because yeah. you'd almost maybe would have thought the other way, like, you know. Yeah, you know, it could have gone the other way too. And I feel like there, there are duos where you kind of need someone might be carrying the weight, but you need someone else to kind of alleviate something, yeah. or sure. you know, sure. Sometimes the person who's living in the shadow of the duo. You know, sometimes they're doing their job by not being in the yeah, spotlight or definitely. not doing things. Right. I don't know. I guess I, I just don't know enough about Simon and Garfunkel. Maybe Garfunkel was pulling his weight behind the scenes and we just didn't see it. And then Simon, you know, he came out there with that voice. But I don't know. Yeah. Um, Abbott and Costello. You know, I don't know. I feel like that's, I don't know. Were they comedy? They were comedy, yeah. Okay. One was skinny and one was fat. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. like, hey, Abbott. You know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> With that, it's that that's more of like like Shaggy and Scooby Doo. Like they both kind of pull their weight. Yeah, where sure. yeah, it's pretty equal. You're it's right. an equal a, duo, a, a matrimony, not a hegemony. Yeah. <laughs> they complement each other, which is I think the point of the duo. Yeah. The other one, like Batman and Robin, I think that was another one back in the day. They were a little more balanced. Now it's you I can't even they compare. Because in the fifties one, like he was really inept. You know, it was like oh yeah, I guess I never like really a weird relationship. The Adam West one yeah, in the sixties, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, Robin, are you? Robin was just an he's idiot. A side, oh. Well, he's a sidekick, yeah. 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 Just like, Gee golly, like Batman. Early 60s sidekick. Yeah. Too, you know? <laughs> it's just completely different. Yeah. I guess then it was a different time, but I don't know. Simpler times. Simpler yeah. Simpler times. You like Sonny and Cher? Do you feel like. Uh, yeah, like, Cher was. But, Cher but did was Sonny it. write more music or something? Or I, don't I don't know. I don't know what his role yeah. was. I don't know what Sonny and Cher's role were, but. Yeah, I know your role. I would feel like Sonny. Had to be doing something. Yeah, I think he was just banging Cher. He was the, mo- he was the money guy. <laughs> like, yeah, he was. I mean, yeah, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, I really don't know. It. Now that I'm thinking about it, I'm that's like, our homework. I don't I mean, know. She anything was obviously about them. the better singer, and <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think they just threw them together, but like, oh look, they're a couple and they're famous. And so they got a yeah. variety show. Yeah. You know? Um. Damn, Did he play guitar or anything? Nah, or? I don't think so. He just, I think like tambourine. Tambourine, yeah. yeah. But aggressive okay. tambourine. Uh, what about <laughs> peanut butter and jelly? Equal. Do you feel like peanut butter is doing more work than jelly? No, I think they Wow, Justin, yeah. you didn't you just... <laughs> <laughs> I don't think... You know, I don't have to think about that one. They're both... They're equals in my mind. Because I think I put more peanut butter on than jelly, if I was uh, going to be honest with you. I probably use more jelly. Really? Yeah. Well, I guess it's just different people. Well, yeah. what if, you, if you just put peanut butter on bread and you just put jelly on bread, which would you rather eat? Peanut butter. See, I'd I'll rather have more protein. On, on your <laughs> toast, I'd rather have jelly. Toast? Okay, yeah, you said bread. I'd rather have peanut <laughs> well, butter. Well, bread. Well, yeah, but toast. Okay, so so you're making breakfast toast. Sure. Breakfast toast, I'm only going jelly. Peanut butter or I'm jelly. I think I would still go peanut butter on breakfast. I might. So. Depends on what my day yeah. is going to yeah. be like. No, yeah, no, it's jelly for me. I, I like the, the okay, sweet. Okay, not a good example. But yeah, I feel like but those they're, they're complimentary. Those complimentary. They are, they are. Yeah, you get the they sweet, are, sweet sure. and the savory. Um, same with like an, an Arnold Palmer. Yeah, kind of has to be 50-50. Mm-hmm. I, I like to go a little heavy on the tea just because it can get washed out sometimes if it's 50-50. But, um, but yeah, either way, they, they're there to benefit each other and to – Sweet and sour. Sweeten you know? the other yeah. one. Um, but yeah, Luigi's definitely Damn, not. Damn, God, you're coming back to more Luigi. I think, too, I like green. So, like, Luigi to me was like, No, I like you know, Luigi personally. Like, oh, okay. I'm just, I'm talking about their duo. I'm, sure. Justin. Is Mario and Luigi the most uh, unbalanced duo? No, God damn it. <laughs> yeah, I, I think Batman and Robin may be a little bit more un, unbalanced than, than Mario and Luigi. Yeah, I don't know. At least in part one, like I said, they were equals. It was just the same character with a green skin. Yeah. Now, I mean, yeah, yeah. maybe maybe Batman and Robin are more unbalanced just because now Robin sucks. I mean, it, yeah. Does he back have... in the day, maybe they were a little bit more. They needed each other, but now it's like, dude, you don't need. Robin. I feel also it's like he in doesn't. the comics were yeah. different too. You know, it's like sometimes Robin was badass and they had him, and then I think it was the Killing Joke is when like. 
Joker like killed him with he like he like distracted Batman. Batman went somewhere else. He like snuck into the manor and just like or whatever it was. Robin showed up and got it. He's like killed him. It was like a super brutal Batman issue. It was like just yeah. him with this like Joker came to death. And it was like you know they needed ratings. So like what are we gonna do? Like I don't know. Have Joker well, mercifully beat Robin? He's not case, that. He's not that popular. Case in point, if if Joker showed up and Bruce Wayne was there by himself, Bruce Wayne would have beat the fuck out of him. Or at least it'd be a good match, right? Yeah. yeah. Like you show up and Robin's there, and Robin's just like, oh he, no, what do I do? Batman's he, not. Yeah, yeah. Hey, great. You're, you're right. Hundred <laughs> percent. What if Ro- Robin's just there to call the cops? Like, uh, uh, I'll just call the cops. It's like, oh man, you're, you're always there. You always have my back with the cell phone ready. Yeah. Are you? Oh yeah. The modern Robin. Film it. Film <laughs> yeah. it and call the cops. <laughs> we Thank this... God you're here, Robin. <laughs> yeah, Robin's just there with the phone, Instagramming or live live yeah. streaming. <laughs> Dude, Bro- Batman, this is gonna make your Insta blow up. <laughs> Look, if we think of any others, we'll, we can we'll come, come back, back to, to it. it yeah. um, but hey, if you can think of something else, we want then you to write you in. You tell us, because <laughs> I still think I don't know. Mario is Sao Tome and Luigi's Principe, in my opinion. But yeah, all right. So let's get into the history. So we said it was a Portuguese colony, and it started in 1470. Wow. So it's been there for like a well, long ass time, America. but. It was actually uninhabited when they found it. So back in 1470, nobody living here. I don't think anybody, maybe some people had been there, but I think it was basically just, I don't know, an uninhabited island. According to them, yeah. Well, they brought people over there, so they they inhabited it pretty quick. But um, After they wiped out the indigenous people. Yeah, I, I just think... Well, because they could prove that. So I think with like uh, Aboriginals or Australians, they can track their migration. Like I think they could track that nobody actually came here, and it was it's, it's like the Galapagos Islands where yeah, yeah, it was it was just life kind of was there, but life humans, was there. Humans really yeah, weren't. But there weren't any humans or or long the ones who were there. They didn't stay. They didn't stay. Yeah. So I'm just throwing out for our viewers: what if? No, yeah. Cover our ass. Well, <laughs> they're like, country boys are all about genocide, and they don't even acknowledge the history of Sao Tome hey, and indigenous yeah. people. The Principeans, yeah, and Principeans. The Principeans. We're all about re- revealing the facts that Wikipedia says are facts, <laughs> and a few YouTube videos. So, yeah, until we prove otherwise by traveling, there. I can fix that. There is something weird here, though. But all right, so once the Portuguese set it up, they brought a lot of people here. So they basically brought a lot of mainland Africans over as slaves. And then there were also mainland Africans who were, I guess, like working there. So they kind of created it in the 1500s as this, I don't know, island, kind of a middle point from uh, mainland Africa. One of the first stopping points, we'll say, for trade, whether it's slaves or everything else that they were exploiting. Um, So several centuries, it was kind of just this island Portuguese island. They had a bunch of rebellions, so it was, there was constantly slave rebellions because I think they didn't have a great infrastructure, and everybody on this island's like, we could, you know, we could just overthrow these people. And so I think it was constantly in this rebellious state, off and on. So that basically happened for I don't know, fifteen hundreds through like seventeen, eighteen hundreds. It was just kind of in the cycle of trading rebellions. And then the 19th century, so really, it was also a big agriculture hub, at least back in the day, for sugarcane. So that's what it kind of started as. And then once all the sugarcane started being grown in, uh, you know, the Caribbean, developed in the places. Caribbean, then South Tomei kind of became nice. not as uh, desirable, at least, or not as cost effective, we'll say, for them to do it. So th- they were kind of in this. Th- Okay, we're we're developing a lot of sugarcane. Now it's not cost effective. What do we do? So in the 19th century, they started growing coffee and cocoa beans. So that kind of became their main main crops. Yeah, I don't know. In the 19th century, once they realized sugarcane wasn't uh, wasn't a good business. Yeah. So they did that. They got independence from Portugal in 1975. Damn. I guess a lot of these Portuguese colonies, 1975 was the time where they... You know, I think just 19, 1975 in general was like one of those years that the, the map of the whole world changed again. Yeah. There, there was, that whole time was a lot of change from the 50s to the 70s yeah. where 
all these old colonies dissolved and or you know the the uh yeah. it was empires like all dissolved their me too movement yeah yeah, yeah. and it's rough but i guess in between 1974 and 75 specifically for the portuguese they had some bill pass and that's when they um let start letting they let, let go. all these colonies go mm-hmm. so this was part of it oh that's interesting um so yeah and then since 1975 since it's become its own country they've had a lot of problems it's still super poor as far as like the GDP. There's really not a lot of industry, not a lot of tourism, like we said. So they've kind of struggled, but one of the differences with this place, I feel like from other places that we've talked about that also kind of got independence and did something, you know, they, they had some sort of game plan. Uh, I feel like this place, they tried everything and nothing really worked. And then now they're just kind of in this, like this state of, I don't like. I don't know. I feel like they're just kind of content where they are. Like it's not a v- really violent place. Some of the other places we've been to, there's civil war, but it's such a small area. I think they're stuck in their ways of as far as just like, oh, we're good. Hmm. Not that they're good, but it, you know, it's very poor. But the people kind of just get by, and they're they're kind of fine with that, or at least because it's so tiny, it's it's hard to, I don't know, really uh, promote themselves. So. Here we are doing it for you for free. All right. <laughs> Send us some tickets. We'll check yeah. it out. Culturally. So we said not a whole lot of industry, not a whole lot going on there, but their major industries are agriculture. So fishing, coffee, uh, chocolate production or the cocoa production. They were called the chocolate islands because I guess it's the ideal place for producing that and coffee. But chocolate specifically, because you can grow under these big trees and it it's more ideal. Know, it's more ideal. Yeah. So that's, that's yeah, because I, I know as far as chocolate goes that like all that award winning Belgium chocolate, most of it comes from Ecuador. Like the, they, it's yeah, the chocolatiers are in Belgium. But yeah, like right. The right. Chocolate isn't the raw product is, is you know, it's not so it's just not ideal. And, you know, it's not a lot of places where it grows. Right. It's right. Really, so you need a super specific climate and this place for like organic chocolate, cocoa, whatever is like the perfect place basically. Uh, so that got me thinking chocolate. What, what's, what's the go-to candy bar? What's the best one? Ooh. Oh man. Chocolate specifically. Not really a bar, but Reese's for me. Okay. Reese's counts. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like Nestle Crunch is pretty good. I don't know they always go to it, but it's a good chocolate bar. I would mm-hmm. go for a Nestle Crunch bar over a Hershey bar, really. Yeah, the Hershey. Unless I'm just doing, unless plain, I'm doing yeah. s'mor- s'mores, mm-hmm. you know, or something. I'm not going just a blank Hershey bar. Yeah, yeah. blank like, Hershey bars a treat, that's are. Ridiculous. Yeah, if you go to a gas station and you grab a a Hershey bar, I mean, <laughs> is there like a Willy Wonka contest going on? Yeah, then I might get the Hershey bar. Like, you know, know. like oh, you went a trip to this harem in Saudi Arabia, and you get your, <laughs> okay, give me that fucking Hershey bar. That sounds awesome. Yeah, unless you're melting it with graham cracker and marshmallow, it's like there's no need to yeah. buy a a Hershey bar. Uh, Even if they had that contest going, it's like I might just buy it, go myself. <laughs> I'll just buy the ticket. Uh, Mounds is good. It pops in my mind. I don't know. Yeah, I, not I, a big Mounds no, fan. No, Almond Joy, dude. Neither. Not I've really never really neither. been on either of them, no. yeah, to be honest. Yeah. Either? No? No. I well, like those, them, but... Those packs where they have, like, the little miniatures, and they sure. get the Mounds and the Almonds with yeah, them, yeah. and they got the Crunch. Yeah. Oh, I always go for the Crunch. Yeah. 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 Well... Crunch is good. The Crunch original is... It's pretty good. Right. It's pretty good. What about Good Bar? If you like peanuts, I mean that's that's a good choice, but it's okay. No, I don't no. know. I feel like if I want peanuts in a chocolate bar, I'm gonna go Snickers or, or Baby Ruth. You, oh, Baby is that Ruth. Not a baby, is that a chocolate bar? It is. That? It is with yeah. a nougat. Yeah. 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 I kind of like Baby Ruth more than the others, actually. Yeah. What do you feel about Milky Way versus Snickers? If you only had to leave with one, Snickers over Milky Way. What's the difference? No nuts in the Milky Way, pretty uh, much, and I think it's just yeah, it's got like a fluffy, like it's caramel. like it's like uh, three Musketeers with with caramel, caramel, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Honestly, Milky Way, I don't know. No, it doesn't do anything for you. I can see that Not facial great. expression. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like I'll, I'll, <laughs> I used to like Milky Ways, but now I'm, I never, never think about Milky Ways or like no. 
I know what someone's getting for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Shit you don't like. I still, I still think that Twix though is. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That, okay. Yeah, hey, Twix is answer. good. And I, I, I gotta eat four. If I buy that king size, unless yeah. I'm sharing, I can't stop. Yeah, I mean like, it. But if is you're peanut saving, butter gone? I'm gonna ask: is, is peanut butter Twix gone again? Because I haven't seen them. Is that a regional thing? Is I'm, that a Texas thing? I don't know I've if I even ha- before, ever had yeah. peanut butter. You've never Twix. had peanut butter Twix? No. No. Fuck. Um, Sounds good. Yeah. I also think that Kit Kats, they're super basic, but also they're good. Yeah. It's like crunch. Where yeah. Yeah. Yep. Same, a similar taste, but it's also like you kind of write it off until you have it. And then you're like, oh, yeah, this is really mm-hmm. good. I, I, not to be specific about it, but like when a Kit Kat is like, fridge temperature or cooler too it's one of those things like certain chocolate or candy bars like melted or like disgusting you know yeah. but like when they're just the right temp they hit different you mm-hmm. know and like i feel like kit kat when it's melted because there's not a whole lot of chocolate anyway it's mostly the wafer wafer sure so if it yeah. melted kit kat it's like you're already losing half of the right coating yeah <laughs> <laughs> but yeah i i feel like melted candy bars in general are just kind of gross yeah yeah but it's weird because Even if like, you, like, Laffy Taffy is better. Like, you know, if I have Laffy, if I'm working valet and I got some Laffy Taffy or some like Starburst, <laughs> dude, they're getting cooked slowly in my pocket. Yeah. When I go to eat them, they're soft, <laughs> you know, but like the chocolate is the exact opposite. Like, fuck, this is yeah. disgusting. Like, <laughs> it's way worse warmed up in my pocket for now. <laughs> I'm just imagining a, a warm Laffy Taffy. Like, hey, you want one? Like, uh, I'm, I'm all right. <laughs> No, it's just been in my pocket for eight hours. Come on. <laughs> the joke is still funny. That's yeah. what you need to worry about. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. If if we had to pick a a country boy bar, what's like the what's the top sure. dog of them? <laughs> I mean, I didn't even bring it up, but York peppermint patties, those are pretty good. I think that's yeah. pretty like if you don't like mint. I like mint. I like them. Really? Yeah. Or, or you like Klondike. Andes, Andes mints, Klondike? That's that's ice cream. Man. Yeah, I, I like mint and ice cream with chocolate, but sometimes the, like the York peppermint, it's it's just a little too little. much. There's it. If we're, if we're talking about uh, duos, the mint on the York <laughs> peppermint is way more than the chocolate. <laughs> so you get this blast of mint, it's just a little tiny a little bit, bit of chocolate. chocolate. Yeah. So you want a little more? Thick, I want fifty fifty chocolate. <laughs> yeah, I want I want it. I want it to be a duo. Not uh, Mario and Luigi. Were... Ah, damn. <laughs> I mean, I feel like we need the rest of the country boys to weigh on their choices. But, yeah, I don't know. I feel uh, that we all are, at least us, we're all in agreement that um, the crunch, crunch bar. We, we like, want something crunchy and, and crispy. Yeah, that, mm-hmm. that we could, if we were going to only bring one with us to Country Boy Island, a crunch bar might, the little mini crunch bar. Yeah, might be it. Um, the crunch bar yeah, good. I'm cool with a crunch or a Kit Kat. Like, obviously, I'm not saying it's the top tier, but if you had to have one on an island that you're eating day in and day out, I feel like that's a pretty good go to chocolate bar. Mm-hmm. Maybe some nuts. I don't know. I don't know. But if I'm eating something day to day, give me wafer, g- give me rice I mean, over. If I'm surviving like, on it, I want or... peanuts. You know what I mean? Like, if I'm on Country Boy Island, <laughs> yeah. all I do is this well, bar. Like, yeah, yeah I want fucking a payday or something with like yeah. at least protein. One other interesting thing about this place and specifically Principi was uh, it was a site where, so in 1919, Sir Arthur Eddington, I guess him and his crew, he was in Principe, his crew was in Brazil. They, it was the first successful test of Einstein's theory of relativity. And they conducted this test on Principe Island. So basically, I don't know exactly how it happened, but there was a solar eclipse Half the team was in Brazil, half was on Principe. Kind of, you know, far enough where I guess they could see uh, differences from the the eclipse at the same time. I don't know. Look, I'm not a freaking scientist, but I know it's important because they did if science. you are a scientist, could you <laughs> yeah. explain it to us? Yeah. Uh, Please explain comments. it to me yeah. in one sentence. Why? But Basically, it, they scienced it and uh, it, yeah. it was I, I think it, yeah. it's something to do with the distance apart where it proved that, uh, I don't know, basically like their views were different from different parts of the world during the same event, yeah. which was this total eclipse. Total eclipse. Of the yeah. Heart. That was, that was kind of, at least for Principe, one of the, one of the main things it was known for, but Hey, 
it was in uh you heard Hosha it Sunday was the site. So you can actually go there and visit it. And it's kind of like an old, I don't know. It, lo- it looks pretty cool, but basically you can go there. If you're into science and relativity and stuff, it's a huge, like, uh, most of the islands on inhabited, uninhabited, undeveloped uh, though. So, oh, so th- there's a ton of like, if you're into birding, if you're into plant, you know, looking up plants this is the place to go so they have all types of creatures and species that are native to this place so there's nothing cool though there's like the sao tome shrew sounds kind of (laughs) cool i don't know it just looks like a regular shrew to me but there's a sao tome ibis several bat species but i think if you're really into birds and plants like these are all i don't know mammals if you're into like birding, this is a place to go because there's all types, all types of crazy plants. I just wish I wish I was into birding to give a fuck enough about to be like, oh, this is get you a line. bird feeder, get you started. <laughs> yeah. I feel like that's the start. oh a cardinal, oh. yeah, because that's the starter, you know. And then once you get burned out in those birds, you got to go yeah. more global. All right, so food and drink. So we said it's tropical. There's a lot, like, most of their diet here is fish, so it's super high seafood. I think they import a lot of food here just because there's a lot of poverty. If you're there visiting, if if the country boys are there, I think you'd probably eat pretty well because it's tons of fish, tons of tropical fruits. Their national dish is kalulu, Ooh. which is a smoked yeah. fish with palm oil, vegetables, and peppers. Um, the food looks good. A good mix of, I guess, Portuguese. There's a lot of pork, mm-hmm. which... Portuguese are known for. Um, so, yeah, I think it's a good mix. I don't think there's a lot of, like, restaurants or bars to really go to. The town of Sao Tome or the city, I think it's, like, 60,000 people. But I think just because this place doesn't have a lot of economic prosperity or a lot of the people don't really have a lot of money, they don't really go out to eat a lot. So there's not a and, – and they don't have a lot of tourism. So it's kind of like – there's there's places, but you can't – it's not like you're going to the beach and you have, a, you know. Yeah, yeah. All these options. But I think if you were there, the food looks pretty good. Nice. So – all right. So other activities, if you're not eating and drinking, they have this Oboe National Park, which is, I guess, one of the big parks. But the coolest thing in this place, they have this Pico Cao Grande – which is a 2,000 meter tall, called like a volcano plug, which I guess is like a condensed volcano. But it looks crazy. It looks like a tower out of a video game or something. I guess you can climb up it, but it did say that, I mean, A, you have to be knowledgeable and like it's not just any tourist can show up and climb this thing. You have to know what you're doing. But it's covered in moss. It's super hot once you start climbing because there's no shade. And there's like deadly snakes all up and down it. Ooh. So yeah, no, thank you. <laughs> That's one of the main tourist attractions. They have a um, the Boca do Inferno, which is a big, big old blowhole in the sea. Is it like an underwater volcano or like a geyser or something? It's or? just where the the sea comes in, and I guess it kind of narrows to a channel and then shoots up really high. Water up. So yeah. it's just the waves coming in. But oh, okay. I guess, however, it's. Um, and look, science, some it's sort of thing. relativity yeah, 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 shoots yeah. the water up. Pressure. Hey, m- maybe that's what this guy who was helping out Einstein or mm-hmm. figuring Einstein shit out. Maybe he saw this and something triggered in his head. But And then they have this Claudio Corral- Carallo chocolate factory. So there is a chocolate factory there. Nice. So you could win a ticket. Maybe that's what they need to do to get tourism. Yeah, no, they need to. Is they need to. Get a ticket to this chocolate factory. And it's been a long time since the world's had like a Wonka. They need a yeah. yeah they need like an African type, Willy Wonka. Uh, yeah, an African yeah. Willy Wonka giveaway. Yeah, no, no one's doing that. <laughs> so yeah, I th- I think when you're here though, there's not a whole lot of infrastructure for tourism. So you're kind of on your own. It's not like I think you could rent a car and probably try to get around the island or whatever. But what's the religion it? of the island? So they're mostly uh, Catholic. Okay. Cool. What what do y'all think? Do you have a impression? Would you go here? Uh, I don't know, man. Um, I like to bar hop when I go to a country. Check out, you know, that is an important the local fair, important thing, or at least thing. having some sort of yeah, yeah, something like 
I don't know. And, and there are bars here, but one of the things I was seeing, because I, I was looking up, okay, what's the, the nightlife? And it's like, oh, here's a place you have to go. And then everything else is kind of like, I was like, no, that's the place. The, that's they'll the close place. earlier. It's not, it's not catered for tourism. Yeah. So well, I'm sure there's a bunch of people just like partying out on, you know, yeah. on the beach or something. So yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm very split. I feel like this might be the hardest decision of any country. Cause there's it's not, tough. there's nothing clear. It's like, Oh, it looks, it looks beautiful, but there's not a whole lot to do once you're there. Like, Oh, but there's this, but there's not that. So yeah. I don't know. If you're into like an outdoorsy adventure vacation, yeah, sounds like that's it would be a cool. But I think place even with that, that, like if you're going to a place for ecotourism, they have the infrastructure where it's like, I feel like with this, it's you're kind of on your own. Yeah. So if you're like Bear Grylls or somebody, and you're you're just out in the jungle and you can do that all day, I don't know. It just doesn't seem like there's a whole lot once you're there, unless you knew somebody there or something or. You gotta be in the know. know yeah, what's going on there? Where all the beach parties are at? I think yeah, something similar. It's like, okay, why am I going here versus another hard to reach country? Right. Island yeah. country. Yeah. Know. What are you gonna get there that you're not gonna get anywhere else? Right. So that's it. And, that's... and it's like you said, it's another Portuguese colony. So it's like, okay, it has some of their influence, but at the same time, yeah, not a ton. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. Um, it's it is this one is pretty low on my list. Not that there's like anything wrong. But yeah, I don't know. I, I feel like this is a, the hardest decision we've had on Country Boys. Because it's easy for me. I'm, I'm a no. Not very interested. I've, there are very cool things about this. I, I think I'm going to have to... I think I'm going to go no, but there are very interesting aspects about this country. Like, it really is like close to 50-50. Unlike Mario and Luigi. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> God, he's old. I guess I'm gonna say no, but I could easily be swayed into yes. So I'm I'm right. I'm fifty one percent. Justin, you no. said no, right? I said no. Yeah, I'm gonna say yes, but I'm also like pretty much right there at no. So I don't know. How. <laughs> I, I, I'm gonna say yes, but it really. Well, if no. everyone else is saying no, I'll be like, I'll go. I would go <laughs> so there. So contrarian. But if country boys need to pay for my trip there, <laughs> so if we yeah. only send one country boy there, and you guys are all saying no, I'm saying yes. <laughs> I feel like this is like a, like, yes or no and a half. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that concludes this one. So, look, where do we, where where do we want to go next? Shit. What do we think? Uh, do we have a choice? You usually, just let us know. Yeah, but five, no, we usually talk five minutes about it. before the episode. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. Okay, so we we're in Europe and then Africa. So. I don't know. Uh, Asia? We could go to Asia or we could go back to South America, which I think the last one we did was Suriname. But we'll see when we get there. But yeah, I don't know. L let's uh, let's do Uruguay next and we'll see you there. Cool. All right. <laughs>